So let's solve some rotational kinematics problems. So remember, rotational kinematics is like linear kinematics, right? Where we're solving position, velocity, acceleration, except we're using our rotational kinematics or our angular kinematics formulas, right? They're the same thing as the linear versions. We just have different variables, right? So instead of x, I have angular displacement, which is theta. And instead of velocity, I have angular velocity, which is omega. And instead of angular, uh, I'm sorry, instead of regular acceleration, I have alpha, which is angular acceleration. All right, so let's look at this first problem. Wheel starts from rest rotates with constant angular acceleration to an angular speed of 12 radians per second in three seconds. So I got the time and I've got the final speed and it starts from rest. So that's my initial, right? Find the magnitude of the angular acceleration. So when you're doing these problems, remember, go pick out the variables, right? Don't just try to like plug stuff into equations. It's not going to work. It's going to end bad. So I need to get the angular acceleration. So I need an equation that has everything except you notice there's no theta. I don't have theta. So which equation can I use? Mm -hmm -hmm. I can use the first one. So, let's say final angular velocity equals initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times time. Right, there's my equation. I can solve for angular acceleration, right? So, do the algebra first. Don't try to plug numbers in. So, I'll subtract over omega naught, and then I'll divide by delta t, and that'll give me my angular acceleration, right? Subtract over, and then I'm left with a delta t, and then I can divide a, I'm sorry, divide delta t. All right, so let's plug in and solve. So my final is 12 radians per second. My initial was zero. My time, where's my time? Three seconds. That's easy. I don't even need a calculator. So 12 minus zero is 12 divided by three is four. Four radians per second squared. That's my angular acceleration. Okay, now I want the angle and radians through which it rotates. So angle and radians through which it rotates, that's finding angular displacement. Where's angular displacement? It's theta. Which equation? Well, now, because I know all four of those things, it doesn't matter what equation I use. So I'm just going to pick this one because I don't got any to do any algebra. It's already solved for delta theta. So angular displacement delta theta equals omega naught delta t plus one half angular acceleration times delta t squared. And because my initial angle, angular velocity was zero, this whole thing is zero, right? So it's basically just that equals one half at squared. So let's plug in and solve. So that's one half. The angular acceleration I just got was four, and my time was three squared, right? So that's uh, four times nine. Three squared is nine, right? Divided by two, half, right? Nine times four, nine, 18, 18, 36. 36 divided by two equals 18 radians right so you could do it with the calculator but come on all right another one machine part rotates at an angular speed of 0.6 radians per second its speed is then increased to 2.2 radians per second okay so the speed is changing so this one's going to be my initial the 0.6 i'll just write it over here that's 0.6 and my final angular velocity is going to be what it increased to so 2.2 and angular acceleration of 0.7 radians per second squared, right? So it's helpful, right? Yes, it takes time, but it's helpful to write out what you have so you don't get lost when you're trying to solve these, right? Find the angle through which the part rotates before reaching final speed. So find the angle, angle is theta. All right, so what equation has all those things in it? that one. I don't have time, right? So here's my equation that doesn't have time. Final, initial, acceleration, theta. All right, so let's go write it out. So final squared equals initial squared plus two alpha delta theta. And I want to solve for the change in the angle, right? Delta theta, the angular displacement. So I'm going to subtract over final squared minus the initial squared, and then that equals show this step, 2a delta theta, right? So now I'm going to divide by 2 times alpha because that'll get rid of that. And I'm left with delta theta. So let's go plug in and solve. 
So final is 2.2 .2 minus 0.6 squared, squared, right? Don't want to forget that. Everybody always forgets that, even me. Divided by 2a, so 2 times 0.7. All right, so let's go do that. And if I do that, I get 3.2 radians. Okay, this third problem. Grinding wheel is initially at rest, rotated with a constant angular acceleration of 5 radians per second squared for 8 seconds. Wheels then brought to rest with a uniform decel... God, that's such a stupid word. Just say acceleration. In 10 revolutions. Can you tell it's a pet peeve of mine? Okay, so 10 revolutions. I know right away i got to turn revolutions into radians. But I know that there's 2 pi radians in one revolution. So if I have 10 revolutions, 10 revolutions is equal to 2 pi times 10. So 2 pi is 6.28, right? 2 times 3.14. So times 10, I just moved the decimal over. So 62.8 radians. I got lucky because it's 10. You may have to multiply if you're doing this, right? If it gives you a different number. Okay, so let's start writing stuff. I know, oh no, it speeds up and then slows down. So there's a speed up part and a slow down part. So Already this problem looks complicated. Not that complicated, but still. Find the angular acceleration required to bring it to rest. Yeah, so I've got to figure out the speed up part and then go figure the slow down part. So let's look at what I need to get. So the slow down part, I need the angular acceleration. And it's brought to rest with... Uh, it's brought to rest in 10 revolutions. So theta is going to be 62.8 radians. And... My initial speed is going to be whatever the final speed up here is from the angular acceleration that made it speed up, which was 5 radians per second squared, right? So uh, my i got to solve for this first. So it's initially at rest. So my initial, right, a wheel initially at rest is 0. Uh, 8 seconds. So that's my initial time. So my delta T is 8 seconds. Okay, so there's a speed up part. This whole thing right here is the speed up part. And then I brought it to rest, right? So i got to solve the speed up part to get final velocity. And then I can take that, plug it in down here as my initial. And I can solve for the acceleration, right? Because my final down here is going to be 0 because it says I'm going to bring the wheel to rest. All right, that's, that's not as terrible as I thought it would be. So, let's solve this. So, for my first one, let's find the equation I can use. So, I don't know theta, right? Because this theta is going to be for over here. So, I don't know theta here. So, automatically, it's got to be the first equation, right? Because that doesn't have displacement in it. So, uh, final equals initial plus alpha delta t and... I know that this is zero for the first one, right? So zero. So my final is just going to be my angular acceleration times my time. And my angular acceleration is five. And my time is eight seconds. And I don't need a calculator because I know eight times five is 40 radians per second. That's my final for the speed up part. That means it's also going to be my initial for before it started slowing down. Oh, I'm home free now. I'm almost there. Okay, so what down here? Okay, so now I have theta, right? So go back to our equations. I need alpha. I have theta, omega, omega, but I don't think, oh, I don't have time. And here's a preview. I don't have time because it tells me I'm going to solve for the next one, right? So I need an equation without time. There's only one equation without time. That one. So... Final squared equals initial squared plus 2 alpha times angular displacement. Okay, so I need to solve for alpha. So let's subtract over my initial. Right, that'll get rid of that. And then I'm going to divide. I'm left with 2 alpha theta. So I'm going to divide by 2 times delta theta, right? That'll get rid of the 2. And that'll get rid of the theta, and I'll be left with alpha. So over 2 times delta theta, that'll give me alpha. So final squared 
is 0 minus initial squared is 40, so 40 squared over uh, 2 times, what did I say my theta was? Two time, 10 times 2 pi, so 62.8. Do all of that mess, and that'll give me, let's find out. So uh, 40 squared, right? I need to make that negative, so I'm going to times negative 1, right? So don't derive a quick math lesson. You can't do negative 40 squared because you're going to get a positive number. Oh, this calculator did it. Wow. You can't just, it's negative, right? You can't just put negative in and square because normally if you square a negative number, it comes out positive. But this calculator is smart boy. So divided by 2 times 62 point, no, yeah, 62.8 gives me negative 12.73 radians per second squared. That's my angular acceleration. And it makes sense because it's negative and it says that an increase in velocity is a positive acceleration. So it's negative. All right, time needed to bring it to rest. So I need time. I'm not solving the quadratic because I ain't got time for that. So I'm just gonna do this one, right? I have four of the five unknowns anyway, so I'll just solve that first one. So final equals initial plus alpha times time and final minus initial over alpha equals time right algebra subtract over then divide by alpha so final minus initial my final velocity was zero my initial velocity was 40 right divided by negative 12.73 and I know it's going to work because I have a negative and a negative and I'm going to cancel out because it can't have a negative time that doesn't make any damn sense All right so 40 divided by take my answer from before and it gave me a negative but I went wow it's pi I wonder if that's like some sort of creepy coincidence equals 3.14 seconds it's pi seconds all right so last one tire placed on a bouncing machine in a service station starts from rest turns through 4.7 revolutions in 1.2 seconds okay so theta is 4.7 revolutions revolutions isn't a base unit but i know that one revolution is two pi radians right every time around a circle is two pi radians so if i just take this and multiply it by two pi right which is the same thing as 6.28 3.14 times 2 4.7 times 6.28 that'll give me my angle so that's going to be 4.7 times 6.28 29.52 radians I'm just going to round up okay back to this 1.2 seconds that's my delta t uh, reaching a final angular speed oh it starts from rest so I know my initial is zero and I don't know the final speed, but I want to solve for the angular acceleration. So I need an equation, right, reaching its final angular speed, but I don't know it. So what can I do? Well, let's find an equation. I need one without final velocity. So right there. No final velocity, right? So let's write it out. So f uh, what am I doing? Delta theta equals... Omega naught delta t plus one half alpha delta t squared. And because initial velocity is zero, this whole thing is zero because zero times anything is zero. So delta theta equals one half at squared, right? So uh, I need to solve for a. So I'm going to multiply two over. So two delta theta equals alpha delta t squared. All right, and now I'm going to divide by delta t squared. That'll cancel that out. And I'm left with alpha. Easy. So let's go calculate. Well, let me plug in my numbers first. So 2 times theta, I said, had to get it over here. Convert it to 29.52. 29.52 over time squared. Time squared. Time is 1.2. 1.2 squared. And that'll give me, let's find out. 29, I'm just going to take my answer from before, times 2, divided by 1.2 squared, 
40.99. I'm just going to round that up to 41 radians per second squared. All right? So all of these, remember, pick out the variables first and then use the equation you need that has the stuff you need without things that you're missing.